You think there'll be emergent leaps of capability as you scale the number of electrodes? Like yeah. there'll be a certain, do you think there'll be like actual number where it just, the, the human experience will be altered? Yes. What do you think that number might be? Whether electrodes or BPS? We of course don't know for sure, but is this 10,000, well, 100,000? Yeah, I mean, certainly if you're anywhere at 10,000 bits per second, I mean, that's vastly faster than any human could communicate right now. If, if you think of the, the what is the average bits per second of a, of a human? It is less than one bit per second over the course of a day because there are 86,400 seconds in a day and you don't com communicate 86,400 um, tokens in a day. Therefore, mm -hmm. your bits per second is less than one, averaged over 24 hours. It's quite slow. Um, and uh, now even if you're communicating very quickly and, and you, you know, you're uh, talking to somebody who understands what you're saying because in order to communicate, you have to, at least to some degree, uh, model the mind state of the person to whom you're speaking. Uh, then take the concept you're trying to convey, compress that into a small number of syllables, speak them, and hope that the other person decompresses them into uh, a conceptual structure that is as close to what you have in your mind as possible. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of signal loss there in that process. Yeah, very lossy compression and decompression. And, and a lot of the... Uh, a lot of what your neurons are doing is distilling the concepts down to a small number of symbols, of, of, of say syllables that I'm speaking, or, or keystrokes, whatever the case may be. So uh, that, that's a lot of what your brain computation is doing. Now, there, there is an argument that that's actually a, a healthy thing to do or a helpful thing to do because as you try to compress complex con concepts, you're perhaps forced to distill the, you know, what is it, what is most essential in those concepts as opposed to just all the fluff. So you, in, in the process of compression, you distill things down to what matters the most because you can only say a few things. So that is perhaps helpful. I think we might, we'll probably get, if, if our data rate increases, the, it's highly probable that we'll become far more verbose. Um, just like your computer, you know, when, Computers had like, I mean, my, my first computer had 8K of RAM, you know, so mm -hmm. um, you really thought about every byte. And, um, you know, now you've got computers with many gigabytes of RAM. So, you know, if you want to do an iPhone app that just says, hello world, it's probably, I don't know, several megabytes minimum, <laughs> with a bunch of fluff. But nonetheless, you, we still prefer to have the computer with the more memory and more compute. So the long-term aspiration of Neuralink is to uh, improve the AI human symbiosis um, by increasing the, the bandwidth of uh, the communication. Because if, even if in the most benign scenario of AI, you have to consider that the AI is simply gonna get bored waiting for you to spit out a few words. I mean, if the AI can communicate it to, terabits per second and you're communicating at you know bits per second yeah it's like talking to a tree 